Universe, how's it going? Do not adjust your set. I am not trying to steal that Poolzilla stick. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Warp's First Must See Comic and Nerd Culture Show. Welcome to the Comic Universe. I'm Dr. J. As always, I've got a PhD in Nerd Culture. And I should know, I figured it out myself. So, it is Topic Tuesday, and of course, we are fresh off the heels of Endgame. So, of course, there's so much movie to talk about here with this topic of what's next for the MCU that I had to bring in a special guest. Of course, joining me this time around is my good friend Tony, aka Serpentine451. How's it going, guys? the universe, Tony. How's it going, guys? Sure, it's been my first time actually being... Welcome to the universe. Sure, it would be very interesting to kind of have my input and help my good buddy Jay out to kind of expand the MCU to even greater heights after the phenomenal film that is Endgame. Yeah, so obviously, pro tip, if you haven't seen Endgame, well, first off, what are you doing? Second, shouldn't be watching this video because we are going to be going into massive spoilers. So, you have been warned. Most certainly. I'm going to say one more time, spoiler alert. Yeah, I might as well find something that's big captions. Spoiler alert. You're <laughs> you're going to be spoiled, like I usually do to my family members and friends when I talk about things they haven't seen yet. It's kind and, of a problem. You know, w w with the with the big caption on the screen, you have no excuse of us not telling you that we were going to spoil it. So there you go. Yep. You had your opportunity to avoid this by clicking off the video, but also leaving a like before you go. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. You always have to leave those likes. <laughs> but So, let's go ahead and get started. Where do you want to start, Tony? Well, I guess uh, we should just go with our general thoughts of the film proper to kind of give the audience here... To give our universe the basis of where we're going to be going off of when it comes okay. to the different sections of the Marvel Universe. So, with everything that happened and the ramifications of taking the Infinity Stones from different timelines, placing them back before they left, there obviously are going to be some big consequences. Now, the Ancient One specifically mentioned that, like, that's how you avoid branch timelines, and clearly branch timelines have been avoided because we didn't see any mm -hmm. here. Definitely and, not. And no dystopian stuff besides, like, besides, uh, you know, the dystopian future that was the future post Thanos' snap, we didn't see any other dystopian futures pop up, so we know they're successful in that regard. But obviously there are going to be some ripple effects due to character deaths, just kind of the devastation of New York after that big Thanos battle, because, you know, literally everything was on fire. Mm-hmm. That compound in <laughs> was completely destroyed. Yep. Utterly obliterated. Just might as well tell Exodia he can go home. Doesn't, he doesn't need to be here. Indeed. But that final battle kind of proved one thing, though. That when you actually have a bunch of super-powered individuals facing off against an army of aliens, they will get stuff done. Yep. I mean, you can. a lot of stuff can happen when the Avengers actually assemble. Just Which, say that. Ten years! Finally said it. That was... Oh yes. my god, yeah. After ten years of, like, several Avengers movies, waiting for Cap to say those two words. Ah, satisfying. Satisfying oh, like a great so, fine wine. Yep, so let's go ahead and start off by talking about, you know, our personal favorite Avenger between the two of us, Steve Rogers. Mm-hmm. And I liked how his story ended and the uh, the characters associated with him with yeah, uh, so, yeah so, yeah let's go yeah so that, that that's what we're going with we're going to talk about cap and the cat family his yeah like you were saying his story ended perfectly 
I absolutely loved it. I think it's just the great just send off to a, a character that has earned happiness, like in spades. Oh, most definitely. And to show Cap's eternal optimism. Even when he's an old man, with returning to the original timeline, actually living a full life with Peggy, and him passing the shield on to uh, Sam. Sam, yeah. it was just great to have that moment where Sam's like, doesn't even feel like mine, and that's, and Steve puts it right, but it is. He yep. he became and the Captain that's America be of this such generation. An interesting. Like, set up the movies for Sam going forward, right? The Captain America movies will be so interesting because unlike Steve's story, where Steve's story was all about fighting for country, truth, and justice, Sam's is... His Captain America, if you've ever read his run, which I highly recommend, is more about social equality. And... I know some of you guys might get turned off by the word this is social justice, but hear me out here. Sam is a black man in modern America. Do you know how difficult that is? Mm. Just, just put that out there. And also, he is taking up the mantle of an iconic hero that has been around since the 40s, both in-universe and out. Definitely so, true. Yeah, sure, Sam may have been introduced in the 60s and 70s at that point in time. And even then, mm -hmm. there was a lot of civil unrest. So it's very fitting to have a character take up the mantle of Captain America that came from a time of turbulence and kind of injustice into something that's a bit reflective nowadays, where he's trying to make things better. He's trying to work out... A world that's pretty much uneasy, and it's a world that's pretty and that starts off pretty much against him because he takes that mantle, and people are like, "Well, that's not my Captain America," you know. And it's gonna be a, such it's gonna be such an interesting struggle. And I'm not, and the, I don't think the MCU is gonna go for the low hanging fruit of like racist hate in him, and he's gonna fight like neo Nazis or whatever, but. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of stories they can tell with Sam and his kind of quest to earn the right to bear the legacy. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Jay. Isn't uh, the Disney streaming service doing a series with Sam and Bucky? Oh yeah, they are indeed, and that's that's going to be. Uh, I'm glad it's gonna be a TV, like a TV show because that gives us more time with Sam as opposed to a movie, and that's why you know, in my personal opinion, I've always thought that the better form of media to translate comic books is television because both television and comic books are serialized in nature, and while you know, obviously movies have like the bigger budget and bigger scope and can hire better actors, quote unquote, you also just get more time to develop a story within a streaming service show or just, you know, a television show in general. So I think that's going to be awesome. Now, where do we think our favorite former assassin is going to land with this alongside Sam? Well, to be honest with Bucky, he had his big character moments in Civil War, Winter Soldier, and in Infinity War. With, I think he would do his best to support the new Captain America in his time of need as, well, back to his old Bucky persona back in World War II. Yeah, and I, and I think that's amazing, right? He can finally go back to being that person again. And because Bucky was always there for Cap, you know, to the end of the line, as they said. And I, I want to see them develop that kind of friendship, especially with that common bond of Steve being around. And, you know, I know Chris Evans is a huge actor, so he probably and he's probably focusing on directing now. That's what he said he wanted to do, which, you know, I commend him for. But I'd love to see at least a couple cameo appearances of, like, 
old man Cap as like a mentor figure, like, hey man, you know, you know, I was knocked down plenty of times, but I got back up. You can do this all day. Trust me. Oh, definitely. And I can also see that some of the stories that they could do, like from Sam's run of when he was Captain America, you can also go with some stuff that they try, you can kind of blend it with stuff that Bucky did as his tenure cap. I mean, there there are great possibilities for both of these characters who took up the cap, the mantle of Captain America in the comics to actually kind of interweave their stories into something that would be very great to see. Yep. Personally, somebody I'd love to see Sam go up against is someone that I've always just... Like, he personally pisses me off. I, I don't like this guy, and I, I just want to see Sam Falcon punch him in the face. Um, and that is, of course, as a U.S. agent, the former, you know... Warden of the Wrath in the comics. I, I just I always forget his actual name, but I know he's uh, like I know he's U.S. agent. I know his uh, surname is Walker. Walker, that's right, Walker. Hate that guy. I'd love to see him. Like I'd love to see him come around. And I also would really be interested to see like the the plot line from the comics when Bucky was Cap of like the Captain America from the sixties who went nuts. True. Ooh, better yet. Here's something that we can also kind of tie around into another topic that we'll be talking about later. But why not include the uh, Bradley family into this show, too? Interesting. Think about it. Captain America has been around since the 40s. And in-universe, it would make sense for the U.S. government to basically try to remake Captain America again after he yep. was frozen in the ice. And so, to kind of coincide with the backstory that uh, the Bradley family went through as Captain America back in the 40s with the uh, grandfatherly patriarch, his first name escapes me. Isaiah. 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 And telling his story, and then you can go into... Uh, e into Eli's, yeah, yeah. Oh, like Eli's, so cool, but mostly more focused yeah. on his uncle back in the Vietnam era. Oh, I could totally think see of it like it, think of the possibilities of not only having because it would be a great mirror for Sam since he's cat now, mm -hmm. and he would have somebody who was in his shoes back then. Well, Isaiah sure was a secret back in the yeah, comics that would, and then that would you have awesome. uh the uh eli's uncle escapes me his first name but his yeah, story yeah, I know, but i know you, i know you're talking about but, i can't place it either but his story back in the vietnam era specifically and i say the vietnam era specifically because i would mm -hmm. think it would be very beneficial to kind of tell that story and plus i would think the bradley family would be a bit bigger in terms of how many children would be in the family per generation yeah. and plus we can i swear i want to keep eli relatively uh in his teens yep. so we can and have eli, the, eli would be also be a good supporting character for sam like somebody for sam to take under his wing the same way steve took sam under his oh yeah definitely that would be, that'd, be, that'd be pretty awesome um i i, I also think like uh, uh, some something cool that they could do, um, go, going along with this like government secrets about like different um, like superhero programs. Another character they could introduce, and of course with Sam and uh, uh, you know, and this could also help Sam kind of understand kind of the weight of his situation even more so. Would be if they brought back Adam Brashear. The Blue Marvel. Oh, that would be great. Because he is so freaking cool. He is essentially Superman fused with Mr. Fantastic, and it is great. Oh, definitely. And I would think that it would be a perfect blend of different uh, 
to kind of explore Cap's side of the Marvel universe, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because sure we never really got too many uh, villains from the comics in Cap's movies. I mean, each of them were done in a very specific way and done perfectly. Well, in some cases. Uh, Hugo Weaving's Red Skull in First Adventure was a good basis. It was, yeah, it, it was great. Like, cause it, it, uh, like his t everybody, you know, there are a lot of people that think, like, it was cheesy or whatever. It fit the time of the, you know, it fit the time that they were trying to portray, though. So, uh, like, oh, I feel like it was great. Oh, I agree with you. This is why I hold uh, First Avenger in very high regard in terms of Captain America movies. Mm -hmm. And then Winter Soldier, we had Bucky, and then Zola came back as a computer monitor. And it was more of Hydra's infiltration and dismantling of S.H.I.E.L.D. That yep. was kind of the crux. And then we had Civil War with uh, Zemo. But the way they did Zemo was actually something that sure, I would have liked it if they had the costumed villainous Zemo from the comics. Yeah, but, but the sympathetic but the, version was definitely interesting. But the Zemo that we got in Civil War was more of a class, uh, clandestine uh, bringer of destruction. Because he knew for a fact the best way to kind of sow discord and get rid of his enemies is through sabotage and through... Was to go, yeah, was to go from the inside, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that was definitely smart. And it's very fitting for Zemo's personality in terms of his comic counterpart because I've always saw Zemo as a villain to be a very intelligent villain, if even with his more... Uh, let's just say narcissistic personality quirks. Yep. And I think a villain like that should be best represented in the way that they did with Civil War, not with the full camp. And sure, I saw one of my favorite cat villains, Podrick the Leaper. Oh, that, that, yeah, he, yeah, that was funny. Uh, I, I think they could do a good job of, like, expanding, like, Sam's rogues gallery by giving him some, like, modernized cat villains. Oh yeah, because we still haven't seen the Serpent Society. Yep. And I think that be really <laughs> cool. They would be best right. represented. So in that way. let's go ahead and move from Cap to, of course, his good buddy, his good buddy, Mister Stark. You know, he probably isn't feeling so good. No. But, uh, no. <laughs> Oof. Let's go ahead and talk about kind of the impact of that. Uh, man, cried, cried, mm. I cried so much. Uh, uh, definitely felt things there. But I felt so many things. So now the biggest question, of course, this is probably the biggest mantle in the MCU. Will someone take it? Personally, I don't think it'll happen right away. No. Because um, it's too soon. It's way too soon to just get another one. Oh, I definitely um, agree with you there. Um, the way I can only see it working is that after a few movies, Rhodey decided to honor his friend that pretty much saved... <laughs> he saved the world. So mm -hmm. the best way to honor his friend like that is to take up his mantle and move from War Machine to Iron Man proper. Yeah, I would. Yeah, but I wouldn't. Do, but I would again. I wouldn't do that right away. Because That's what honestly, I'm saying. Yeah, what I'm, if, if we're being honest, like Rhodey hasn't developed his identity as War Machine that much. True, like, and that's why I'm saying it would be very interesting to have a war, like a trilogy of War Machine movies, where I think in the midpoint. Mm -hmm. Before the final film, Rhodey actually decides, you know what? Let's honor Tony's memory and I will become Iron Man. Yeah, because I definitely think, like, with Nick back and, Car and Carol here, it would make a lot more sense for, like, them to finally, now that Hydra has been cleared from S.H.I.E.L.D., that they properly rebuild S.H.I.E.L.D., and I think Rhodey would be a good force in that, and... You know, Rhodey and Carol 
would have a nice connection, being that they're both former airmen. True. And, and oh, they they are they are a couple in the comics, so maybe maybe that'll lead to something. It doesn't need to, but that could be an, a nice little homage. But um, I I think he'd work he'd work really well with Shields because we saw in Endgame, you know, dr- after the top five year time jump, that he was mainly running missions for Nat, who was essentially kind of playing the Nick Fury role for the Avengers. Mm-hmm. So I think that could work really well. And, you know, may- maybe Rhodey could lead, like, a Secret Avengers team. They wouldn't be called the Secret Avengers, but he'd lead, like, a Black Ops team and do different missions and stuff. I think that could be pretty interesting. And it would be kind of cool because... If memory best serves me, he was a member of the Secret Avengers for a time. Yes, he was. And so that would be that would be pretty interesting. Although, what would get me laughing uncontrollably if they make a subtle wink and nod to the West Coast Avengers? Oh uh, yeah, Rhodey's other team. Duh. Oh man, that would be hilarious. But, uh... Yeah, so, moving on, let's go to another Avenger of the main team. Our buddy Brian's boy, Clint Barton. So, uh, he's getting a TV show, and the rumor is that it's going to be him passing the torch to his daughter, um, who actually isn't named Kate, so that kind of threw me off. But hey, like they already started hinting at it in Endgame that she's a pretty gifted archer. He even calls her Hawkeye. And it would be very cool to have him stay in the Ronin persona, and Uh she takes up the mantle of Hawkeye. I think that would be great. And outside of the TV show, I think I know the perfect place to put Clint, um, especially given his arc for Endgame. Clint would again help S.H.I.E.L.D. out, like, like, now that Nick is trying to reform it, and they really need S.H.I.E.L.D. given the state of the world post- Thanos and all the return of all these people. I think what Clint will do is to reflect his kind of arc of being this relentless killer but wanting to redeem himself is to lead the Thunderbolts. And you know what? I actually can see that. Like, he would be the one person to kind of institute some the Thunderbolt uh, program to basically saying, hey, if you actually want to reform your ways from being a killer and a downright criminal, you have your opportunity. Like. Yeah, he's like, I know what that's like. I had a friend, I had a friend who was like that as well, and he could do it to also as a way of honoring Natasha, because that was Natasha's goal throughout her entire life, was to get the red out of her ledger, as she said. Mm-hmm, Definitely. And I also would like to see a lot of notable Thunderbolt characters kind of inducted and Personally, introduced. the one that I really want to see is Songbird. Songbird's one of my favorite members of the Thunderbolts. I love her. She's great. And it, she actually became an Avenger, which is also great. Mm-hmm. And, like, of course, like, um, Beetle would be a cool one. He eventually becomes Mach 5. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was an original Thunderbolt. Um, we got, we got, it, we got a lot of pl- plenty of different options, and also this could be a, a way to keep villains around because the MCU's biggest problem early on is they kept killing off their villains. But since they are def- they've been on a like a not um, not like redeemable streak, but sympathetic streak. There, there, okay, there are plenty of opportunities of just snatching up some of these villains that people really like and actually trying to give them redemption arcs. Oh yeah, definitely. So, I mean, that would be really cool. I would be down for that. I think that's the perfect way to fit Clint into, like, a post-endgame world and give him his own set of movies, mm-hmm. in a sense. Alright, so which Avenger should we talk about next? Oh, let's go with Thor. 
All right. All right. Our favorite <laughs> beer guzzling, beard growing. Sad, sad boy. Sad, out sad shape. boy. Sad, sad boy. Oh, man. Well, it, it is going to be so much fun. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be so much fun seeing the Asgardians of the Galaxy, mm-hmm. as he put it. And just to have... Because uh, it would be very interesting to see Thor in the next Guardians movie. <laughs> if he's actually going to be in the cast. Because it would be hysterical. Yep. Also, since they're going to be traveling around space, and we saw a statue of this character in Thor Ragnarok, I think Ooh. it would be so cool if in the next Guardians movie, they introduced everybody's favorite hammer-wielding horse, Beta, Beta Ray, Ray Bill. Bill. Oh, that would be great. Oh, that would be f- so good. I would love it. I'd love it. Also, the the funniest thing they could do, like, just if we're just throwing out jokes, funniest thing they could do is introduce, um, introduce Frog Thor. <laughs> Frog Thor <laughs> is hilarious. Like, if there's a, if there's a joke where he gets turned into a frog and he's just a, like a fat toad, uh. he's still losing the weight. Oh, that would be so funny. He'd better have listened to his mom and started eating those salads. Yep, because that's a word to the wise there, universe. Always listen to your mama. Yep, exactly. But, yeah, no, it's going to be so much fun. Obviously, they already started joking with the power dynamic between uh, Chris Pratt and Chris Hemsworth. And then you also have... The plot for, like, where the Guardians are going to be now is that they're going to be looking for Gamora because she didn't join them in the end of Endgame. Now, see, my theory is that actually Gamora is gone gone because when Tony snapped, all of Thanos' people disappeared. Mm. That, that, is she, a, that is a theory. And she was with Thanos. Like, I understand she wasn't aligned with Thanos, but she was part of Thanos' forces. That is true. I mean, I do agree with you there. But, you know, we'll see. Obviously, the thing that they've constantly been building up for the Guardians is Adam Warlock, so that would be pretty great. Yep, just to see him come in and, like... (laughs) Time to wreck and, shop. And maybe Adam and maybe Adam will be a way to fi- to be able to get Gamora back from the you know soul dimension. Now I'm not saying that that would like that that would mean oh if they get Gamora they can grab Natasha too. Maybe Natasha chooses to stay because she feels like this is the, her best way to you know redeem herself. Mm-hmm. And, and besides, they already <laughs> stated that the film, well, from what she told me at one point in time, that the uh, Black Widow yeah. movie is going to be a prequel film anyway. Yep. So, so I definitely think, um, like, if Adam is able to, like, get Gamora, like, the Gamora we know from, the, you know, the past Guardian movies that is actually in love with Star-Lord. Um, if they get her, if they get her back from the Soul Dimension, thanks to Adam and his incredible powers, like Natasha will be like, "Nah, it's cool. Uh, I I feel like this is where I belong. This is where I need to be. Uh, you still have more things to do. Go ahead and go." Like you, because the, the thing, the thing, w- w- the difference between Natasha and Gamora's circumstances, Gamora was thrown down there without given, being given a choice. Natasha chose to jump and, you know, sacrifice herself. Mm-hmm. Very so, true. Like it, it makes a lot more sense for Gamora to be able to like earn her second chance. And the reason, and the other reason why I think like the Gamora that we saw in the battle that was from the past is gone, is well, duh, timeline. But two, like, why would they have passed Gamora around? If that's just gonna ha- she would have to go through- she would have to, like, repeat 
Gamora's character arc in order to become the same Gamora. And nobody wants to see a retreading. So I definitely think they're just going to find a way to bring the Gamora we know back. And the best way to do that is Adam Warlock. And we already know that Adam Warlock and Gamora have had a strong connection in the comics, being part of the Infinity Force, and, um, you know, both having access to Soul World. So I definitely think that's going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. I could definitely agree with you there. Plus, we also and would get to see... in the cosmic realm of things, uh, with the Guardians, I definitely think the Guardians could also be a harbinger of the uh, next big universal event. And Tony Freaked, when I suggested this, and you guys, you know, you might want to hold on to your hat when I say this one word, because I think they could be gearing up for Annihilation. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, that would be brilliant. Because when you have, like, the great cosmic stuff of the uh, of Marvel is so vast and basically a giant soap opera. And when you have, like, the, some great epics, like in, uh, in, when you have the Infinite Gaunt Infinity Gauntlet, we have all these great stories connected to the Infinity Gems in the mm -hmm. comics, the stones, and the movies. You have all of these moments where these great items of power are used to basically shape the universe. That way we can also see a lot of the great cosmic entities like Eternity, uh, the Eternals, uh, the Living Which Tribunal. You know the Eternals themselves are getting a movie, so that's cool. All of it's going to be very interesting in exploring the vastness of space. Uh, and, you know, uh, s since Disney, since Disney's deal went through, they have the perfect conduit to set up the villain for Annihilation. That they do. That they do. In the Fantastic Four. That, and they'd be the perfect building block. Because, I mean, everybody, I mean, everybody wants to see Doom. I want to see Doom. Doom is my favorite Marvel villain of all time. But I think Doom is best to be saved. And sure, they can obviously connect his origin to them, and like he'll be there. But Annihilus should be definitely in the forefront of the Fantastic Four. Oh yeah, bringing about uh, leading to Annihilation, which also they try to do. I would also think that they would also try to do Secret Invasion. Well. Um, that's kind of off the table, because the MCU version of the Scrolls are more refugees, and they're not bad guys. Right, okay. So, so that's kind of off the table. I mean, they the, could the, the, take the, elements uh, of Secret Invasion, though. Yeah. Because they... I mean, the, uh, the, the base, basically, from what the MCU has done in, in uh, Captain Marvel, is, uh, the Kree are the kind of evil, dictatorial conquesting aliens and like the scrolls are just refugees from a an empire that was annihilated by the Kree and refused to you know bend the knee as it were mm, okay so but it would lend to a lot of uh, the fantastic fours notable villains like mm. super scroll will definitely have to be like a character in there oh yeah I mean, yeah, because there are always going to be fringe factions of a good force. Because even if, you know, the scrolls, a majority of them are good guys, they're still going to be bad. You know, they're still going to be evil scrolls. Because, I mean, just like there are evil humans, there are going to be evil scrolls. Yep, and I'm sure that there are a bunch of good Kree out there. Mm-hmm. Into the Fantastic Four. Now, Tony, you and I are both huge fans of uh, this team and this franchise. What would you like to see most with the Fantastic Four? With the Fantastic Four, personally, I want to see them actually be, well, kind of the explorers of the universe and the different dimensions. Because mm. they're, they're all about researching and exploration. So I would like to see mm. them basically globe, tra like, Travel the globe, travel the vastness of space, 
travel to the different universes. I can see, see that's that's a cool angle. It definitely explores their roots. But this is personally where I would like to take it, and th- and you could also incorporate a lot of other characters into this kind of thing, and because you know Marvel is definitely is um, currently going through this kind of team up ish phase. I think a cool thing to do when the Fantastic Four eventually come around, which my theory is that they are possibly stuck in the quantum realm because Reed, Sue, Johnny, and Ben were helping Hank when he first experimented, along with, like, when Janet was trapped in there as well. So, I think that when they did all the, you know, the quantum travel with, like, the Avengers and stuff, this allowed Reed to piggyback off the signal, maybe the signal, the last signal that they used to try and get Cap back, Reed was able to piggyback off of that signal and finally get to modern time, he and his family. And I think being the scholar that Reed is, and, you know, obviously the person who wants to not only seek knowledge, but also spread and give knowledge, I think the perfect way for the Fantastic Four to be incorporated into the Marvel Cinematic Universe would be to implement the Future Foundation, which, that's not a bad idea, and I can that's agree a, with you there. But that's kind of their way to you know give back to the world, and also you can incorporate some of our you know young, ta- like more intelligently gifted heroes like Shuri and Peter Parker, you know who is always a frequent collaborator with the Fantastic Four since his first issue. Mm-hmm. Definitely agreeing with you there. But the one thing that I vehemently will always say is that don't go with the first option in terms of villains. Yep. Because Doom, yeah, Doom's a great villain. I love Doctor Doom as much as the next fan, but he shouldn't be the first villain in a Fantastic Four movie. And I think Marvel knows that, and Marvel has... That, I mean, that's exactly... Do Green Goblin is the first villain for, you know, Spider-Man Homecoming. But I think the per- Like, explore the rogues gallery that the Fantastic Four have. I mean... It's so vast! I mean, hell! I mean, I know we just did a, like, time travel story with Endgame, but hell, we could do Kang the Conqueror now! Kang the Conqueror, El Diablo, Mole Man, Dragon Man? The, uh, the Frightful Four... The Puppet Master, even. Ooh, Puppet Master would be great. The horror the horror potential for that would be a... Oh, my God. Because, come on, guys. Let's think of... There are so many great Fantastic Four, uh, Fantastic Four villains that could live up to the potential and expectations in and, a... And that's the thing. They have so much... They have such a wide variety in their gallery that you know any filmmaker that takes on this property that like they could experiment with a bunch of different choices they could do horror they could do sci-fi obviously that's you know that's the main that's the main crux that i i think you know you it would definitely be at the core of the series either way do action they could do comedy they could do whatever they want really like honestly marvel has like with, with Endgame, they have really earned my trust permanently. I'm not saying they can do no wrong, but they definitely have earned enough good faith from me where I'm, I, I'm not going to doubt them until they give me a reason to doubt them. Oh, most definitely, and I can agree with you there. Well, and speaking of Mr. Parker, and we already see glimpses right. of what he's going to be doing in this post-Endgame world, in Far yeah, From Home. Yeah, so poor kid. He yeah, got Uncle poor Ben kid. twice. Yeah, definitely a poor kid. But oh, man. I also like in the trailers of Far From Home that uh, <laughs> Happy is flirty with Aunt May. I think that is hysterical. Yep. Uh, clearly, he's going to like start to develop his uh, friendship and eventual relationship with MJ. So that's going to be cool. Um, 
you know, he's expanding his rogues gallery. He's got Vulture. Scorpion's been teased. And now we're getting Mysterio. We saw Shocker already. So, so he's already got a pretty wide variety. And plus, in his rogues gallery. if we don't know for sure, we got Hydro Man. We also got Sandman in there. Yep. If they're not like just or, elemental you know, forces. Could, you know, they, yeah, they could also join forces and become Mudman, because yes, Mudman was a thing. Which is a very weird thing. And, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, room, the, the ongoing rumor, you know, hasn't been confirmed, but the ongoing rumor for far, from Far From Home is that Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman, will be involved here because oh. Far From Home takes place in the UK, and for those of you who don't know, because, you know... Comics don't have audio. Jessica Drew is actually British. Oh, 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 oh my, oh my. Yeah. Now I I, I don't know if he's st I don't know if he's still out there, but a good buddy of ours, Kyle, he was a huge Jessica Drew fan. I, and and uh, you know if you're somehow watching this, Kyle, maybe it could be a possibility, dude. Yep, just in the. Just putting out there in the universe, my friend. I miss you, buddy. I, I, I think, I think, it, I think it would be pretty awesome to see Jessica around. Like my dream casting for Jessica Drew has always been Kate Beckinsale. I mean, nothing. That is definitely some good casting there. Like that would be who I would want if she does show up. I think it'd be. I think it'd be cool to see her. You know, because you know we do need. A Black Widow-esque type of role filled in the MCU now, and Jessica does fill that niche. Mm-hmm. Definitely true. I think, I, I think it'd be pretty interesting. And I would assume, and it would be very funny to me at least, that in a uh, in a Spider-Man sequel after Far From Home, that. I would love to see an MCU version of Black Cat if we're not going to be getting that Silver Sable Black Cat movie at all. See, I, I don't know if there's if Sony's if, please, please tell me Sony to describe that. If they're still moving forward from that with that, then I guess not. But I would love a Black Cat movie. I just I just want I just want it. I want it so bad. I, I and personally, I think the funniest way to do it and the best way to do it is to do it with, uh, in, in the vein of the Ultimate Universe, where she's like this sexy older lady, and then, uh, you know, she doesn't know who he is, and so she's flirting with him and all that stuff. She's hitting on him, and he's putting on a deeper voice, so he's like, seems like, oh yeah, I'm an adult. And then, when she finally makes out with him, and, like, takes his mask and all. She sees he's a kid, and she just, she throws, like, in the comic, she literally throws up. She's like, oh my god, oh, I'm a predator. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but the way I, but the way I see in the way that they're probably going to do it is that they're going to make, well, if the, if the MCU is going to be doing Black Cat, I would assume that the, in, to kind of avoid that kind of, uh, let's just say, unpleasant image. Well, uh, you they, have to admit, that'd be hilarious. That too. would be funny. That would be absolutely funny. But I think they would be forward-thinking enough to kind of avoid that. Yeah, and make that probably her... lead to some controversy because some people are too sensitive. Mm-hmm. Very true. <sighs> A great world we live in where we can't even have fun anymore. Yep. But anyway, um, no, I definitely do agree that they'd probably cast more age appropriate. But you know, you, but you have you have to. There's only one requirement that I have to keep on the table 100% because it is a core value of her character, and I will not stand for this if this does not happen. Hear me, Marvel. This is all I'm asking for. She needs to be thick. Mm. Thick. Yes. Three C's. Yes. Well, why don't we act actually add a fourth C on there? <laughs> All right, fourth C, just for good measure. Because but, for men like us who are at the epitome of high culture, we you gotta do it for the culture, Marvel. Do it for the culture. 
And sure, if we're asking for a whole lot, our apologies. But if you can somehow swing it in our favor. We are we are simple men of simple needs. Yeah, we we just want a lot of things in our lives. We are simple nerds. We love our comics, we love our manga, we love our anime, we love our games, and we also love our glorious thick women. <laughs> exactly, and if you're gonna put Black Cat in the movie, th that's just a requirement. Like, t t look, don't do what you did. Don't do what De don't do what Christopher Nolan did in the the dark in uh, the Dark Knight Returns and have Selena Kyle be Anne Hathaway, who in her own right is a beautiful woman. Don't get me wrong, but Selena Kyle should not. Her frame should not be a straight line, people. Mm, yeah. Should not. Just saying. It just looks disappointing in a cat suit. A cat suit is worth seeing some thickness. Listen, man. The, the cat suit is perfectly designed for the thigh gap. It's gotta like, be there. It needs to be there. And for those in the universe... I am sorry for our bouts of degeneracy, but it needed to be yeah. said. Yeah, yeah. Thick tangent aside, I, it, that that was necessary. We had, we are men of culture. We had to do it for the culture. Yep. And Ma Marvel, please just indulge us. Yep. And it, those, yeah. and our brothers out You've there, indulged us on a lot over the years, Mark. Give yeah. us this thing, please. Definitely. And to all of uh, to men similar to us. Women too. We don't want to uh, disclude any. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're not leaving you out, lesbians. ladies. We're not leaving you out, ladies. We know you also enjoy thick women. Yep. Because we're not going to disclude you. Let's hold our monocles and top hats high, folks. Because we are exactly. at the epitome of culture. Exactly. I may not have the monocle, but I have the top hat to elevate myself to the highest levels of culture. All right, so with that amazing sick tangent, I feel like that's a good place to end it, you know, end it on a nice positive note. Thank you again, Tony. This has been a blast, and, you know, I'm sure this has been a... This is definitely a longer conversation, but I'm sure the universe got some entertainment out of it. Of course, I will leave a link to Tony's individual channel, Serpentine451, in the description, and... Hopefully, uh, I can, you know, bring him along on other certain topics as well. So, again, we hope you enjoyed this. We hope you had fun. Uh, in the outro card, I will leave a link to, again, Tony's channel and some videos that you might like to hear on our channel. If you're new to the universe, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Join the universe today and hit that bell icon because it is very important. Notifications. So you get notified every time myself... DPZ or C Dubs uploads a new video. We've got a lot of MK content going on, so if you're a combat fan, this is definitely the place to be. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later and hopefully I'll see you in the universe. Peace. Peace.